So my party people, from this question, um, you know, whether it's a word problem or not, you know, you always want to understand what the question's asking you to figure out. And the first thing you want to do is exactly that. Let's read the question. So it says, what is the X coordinate when Y equals four? So all I gathered from that, all I gathered from that is just saying, hey, well, what I'm looking for is, if we're looking at it as X comma Y, I'm looking for what this question mark is here when you have a four for the Y. Is that, is that true, everybody? That's what we're looking for there? We're looking for what that question mark is, what the X is when Y is four. Right on. Okay, so again, I'm not, I'm not revealing what math we're doing yet. It's gonna be very obvious in a moment once we point out a very important keyword, but we need to first understand, hey, basically, simply put, what is it that we're being asked to find? And here, if it's a coordinate x, y, we're looking for the what x is when y is four. Now, again, that's important, very important, but now let's go into the second most important thing here, and it's gonna be the clue that is just blasted on this problem. Everybody, if you had to highlight one word in the entire question, the whole problem, what's one word that you would really highlight, circle, emphasize, mark with a pen, whatever way you want to say it? <laughs> Thank you. It looks like everyone here is agreeing that we're talking about slope. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. So let's highlight that right there. We're looking for slope. Okay. Uh, my party people, when it comes to slope, does there happen to be a formula that we can potentially apply here? <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely a potential formula. Hey, 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 really quick before we continue, if you're watching this, you've likely already been to one of my classes. And if you haven't been to one of my classes, remember to check that schedule. The link is right up there and in the description of this video. That way you can understand when my free classes are and my access program classes are. That way you can keep raising your score, knowing what topics we're doing and get the job you want. So again, click there or in the description to see when the classes are and join one for free. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's get back to the action. Now, a couple of us here might be thinking one of two things. Some of us here might be thinking that we're dealing with a Y equals mx plus b problem and on the other hand some of us might be thinking that we're using this formula here m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so let's mark these out here formula number one and formula number two so which of these formulas do you think best applies to this problem because both of them use slope, right? The first one has slope right here. And the second one, slope is by itself. Okay, so why are you saying, I see the majority of us, I see that the majority of us here are saying number two. Why is that? Why is the second formula the best one to go with? Why is that? Who can tell me why? There we go. Okay. So before I move on, let's go ahead and just make sure we know where we're at. We're looking for an X coordinate when Y is four. But the biggest thing here is that, hey, we're going to give you some information about the slope. We're going to give you what the slope is. So when we thought about that, we said, hey, let's go ahead and just, there's a couple of formulas that use slope in it like y equals mx plus b, and the slope formula itself. The reason, everybody, the reason that this one right here is the best one to go with is because when you look at the formula, everybody, what this means, what this right here, all of this here means is that to find slope, to calculate it, you are basically gonna take two coordinates, the two and the one here, that just tells you which coordinate it belongs to. So for example, if I'm taking a look at right over here, that piece of information that we're given, 
I hope you realize that this is written in the form x comma y. Everybody, is that true? Is that written in that form where you have a number, comma, another number, all wrapped in a parentheses? Absolutely. So what we need to recognize is that we have one coordinate here and the question itself, look at the red, just take a look at the red. It tells you, hey, what's the x when y is four? The way I wrote it down earlier, right here. You erase that. That's another coordinate. That is another coordinate. And so what I can happily say now, or really mark down, is that we are given two coordinates and we're given the slope. We gotta find one piece of information. That's why this one's the better one. That's why this is the better one, because I can tell you right now, if I have 10 comma 14, I can pretend that this is my x1 and that's y1. All the one means, all that means is that, hey, this is my first x and my first y. And then over here, the question mark with the four, I'll just go ahead and say that that is my second x and my second y. Is that okay with you guys? Before I continue, because understanding this right here is gonna be the biggest piece of this problem. Does this make sense or is this okay with you before we move on? Okay. So once you're able, once you get to this point, and I'm not saying that everybody's guaranteed to get to this point, but what I'm saying is once you understand the piece of, of, of information that you have and you know your formula right over here, well, what you're doing is filling in the formula with the information you have, solving it, and you're done. Let me show you what this looks like. So here's the formula. Slope, which is M. Again, let me just mark that down right there. That's your slope equals, again, your second Y minus your first Y, second X minus your first X. Really, if, you're, if you have any experience with this at all, all I can tell you is this. The order doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you're using the same order on the top and the bottom. So if you start with this Y up top, then this X starts on the bottom. If this Y starts up top, then this X starts on the bottom. Just make sure you're lining it up the same way and you're fine and you're subtracting. But once we're here, all we gotta do, like I said, fill everything in and we're good. My party people, what did this problem say uh, was the slope? What was the slope? Ah, it was one. So again, like I said, what we're doing now is just filling in this formula solving the formula. We have the slope right here. The slope is one, so I'll plug that right in. And then what I'm gonna do, just to make sure that I don't make a mistake, this is something that you should probably try to do too. Whenever you're filling in formulas, do your best to make sure you are copying and pasting exactly as it is. Don't get confused by negatives, easiest way to get confused. So let me go ahead and just fill this right here. And I'm going to put the subtraction sign already right there. Everyone, what number am I filling in for Y2? Right, we'll go ahead and put that 4. I'll go ahead and just, again, mark Y2 and X2 right here. So I'll go ahead and put, hey, we have 4 right there. And what will I go ahead and put for Y1? 14, sounds good. So I'll go ahead and mark that with green right over here. And sure, yep, that'll be 14. Uh, everyone, what am I gonna put for X2? Yeah, we can put a question mark or we can put an X there. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for what that second X is. And so with that said, hey, that's fine. Just leave it as X. It's all good. Leave it as X. And then what am I putting in for X1? I'll 
I'll be putting on 10. Sounds good. So cool. Let's go and mark that there. Boom. So before I continue, I just want to make sure that you guys are with me, especially those who are not quite commenting right now. Do you understand that all we did was figure out, hey, this formula applies to what we're doing, number one. And then number two, we are just taking the information we have and appropriately and correctly translating it onto the formula. Does that make sense to you so far? We just plugged in what we had the right way. That's all we did. Cool. Now this might this, this part up next might feel like the hard part where we're actually solving. And like I said, before you get into math knowledge, your goal is to make sure that you have mastered all types of calculation and all types of numbers. So if at any point you feel a little lost with the work that I'm doing, just make sure you understand, hey, just got to work on my basics here. I can do that. So let's solve this. Is there anything we can do here to clean this up before we continue on? Is there anything that we can just clean right up? Yeah, that's right. Lambda, Jocelyn, we can go ahead and subtract the top. But let's make sure we know how to handle negatives, right? Uh, what is 4 minus 14 going to be? Correct. That's going to be negative 10. So let me go ahead and just move this over here. And just like this free YouTube video right here my Math 40 people, I have a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every mistake and a free math class every week, once a week for two hours. Click the link over here to sign up and get started and keep raising that score. Let's get back to the action. So this will end up becoming again, a one equals, and so again, four minus 14. That's the same thing as 14 minus four, but it's in the negative direction because you're subtracting more than what you have. So four minus 14, that's a difference of 10, but it'll be negative 10 because you're subtracting more than you have. And so that'll be negative 10 up top. And on the bottom, we still have that X minus 10. So now that we're here, there are two very, very approachable ways to do this. Number one, it's gonna be the eyeball test. Everybody, what this is saying is it's saying, hey, negative 10 divided by whatever this is, is gonna be one. My party people, quick question. What's the only way that you can divide a number and get one? What's the only way that can happen? What's the only way you can divide a number and get one? Exactly, dividing it by itself. Thank you, Landa, thank you, Indy. Thank you, Zoom user. If you want to tell me your name, I'll switch your name up there. But yeah, if you divide a number by itself, you get one. Think about it. Five divided by five, that's one. 25 divided by 25, that's one. 92 divided by 92, that's one. So if we have negative 10 up top, what does the bottom have to be then? If the top is negative 10, the bottom also has to be negative 10. It has to. Because remember, if you're dividing a number by itself, you're trying to get one. You're trying to get that one right over there. So that's one way you could look at it. And if you eyeball it, well, you already have that negative 10 right there. That needs to be a zero then. Because zero minus 10, that's going to give you negative 10. That's one way you could look at it. One way you could look at it. The other way that's a lot more direct and will work for any number that you see there is this. I want to get X by itself, but it's in the denominator. What I'm first going to do is this. Allow me to move this over here. And what I'm going to do, my party people, is I'm going to get this X minus 10 out of the denominator by multiplying the entire side here by X minus 10. If you didn't know you could do that, well, welcome. So all I'm doing here is getting that variable, that X, out of the denominator by multiplying both sides by the denominator. That's how you can get rid of the stuff on the bottom and place it up top. And so to show you here, 
What's going to happen right over here, everybody? When you divide and multiply by the same exact thing, what's that C word that ends up happening? Right, it's going to cancel out. And Kai, no, you can't. But yes, it's going to cancel out. So this right here cancels out. And what you're going to be left with is this. Everybody, if you're multiplying by 1, is it true that the left side is just going to be x minus 10? Yeah, right? So you're just multiplying by 1. Just multiplying by 1. So that's going to stay the same. And on the right side, we just have the negative 10. What we're doing here is we're going to finish solving the equation. There's only one thing left to do to get x by itself. What's that going to be? And be specific here. Don't just give me, yeah, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. We're going to add the 10 because if we notice, we're subtracting 10 right now. I got to get rid of a taking away 10. The opposite of taking away 10, adding 10, but make sure that you mention doing it to both sides. So that's going to be right here. Plus 10, plus 10. Booyah. That's going to cancel on the left. And it's going to cancel on the right. And what we end up getting is x equals 0. We end up getting x equals 0. And that's going to be the answer. And I'm going to zoom out so you can take a screenshot if you'd like to. But what the answer is going to be, uh, what the answer is going to be here is c0. And for those of you who have gone through your mental math work, if you know slope, you might actually be able to get this problem done without putting your pencil to paper at all. Here's what I mean. Again, this might be a little bit more of an advanced technique, but just listen up if you'd like to stay curious. <clears throat> what I noticed was that, hey, the slope is one. So what that means is every time I go over by one on the X, I go up one on the Y. If you look at where we were, 14 on the Y, down to four on the Y, that tells me that we went from 14 to 4, I'm going back 10. And just like I said earlier, a slope of 1 means you go up 1 on the x, you go up 1 on the y. So if I go down 10 on the y, I'm going down 10 on the x. 10 minus 10, 0, done. Did that make sense to anybody out there? And again, for some of us it might, for some of us it won't, and that's okay. That's just a slightly more advanced way of thinking about it in terms of manipulating slope. That's all it was. Yeah, so what happened to the 1, Fatmata, was that, hey, that x minus 10 times 1 right over here. Remember that, <clears throat> excuse me. Remember that anything times 1 is going to stay the same. So here, x minus 10 times 1, it's just going to be x, x minus 10. It's just going to be x minus 10. I got you, Shane, and see ya. I got you there, too. So for those of you, gotcha. So with that said, for those of you here that are in the program, I want to go ahead and show you my screen right here behind me. Um, this is basically going to be where you want to go to do more problems just like this. So when you log into the website, here's what you see. You get your math basics, AR, MK, your practice test course, everything you need. But you're going to go ahead and click math knowledge right here. And this is going to go ahead and show you your math knowledge dashboard. It's going to show you everything you've completed. This is a dummy account, so you're going to see a bunch of X's. But your progress is going to be tracked. For this specific problem, what you'll do is you'll go for, right over here, Unit 9. Unit 9, graphing lines and calculating slope. That's where you're going to work on. So when you click it, you can go ahead and do a time speed drill, or you can look at lessons with videos and worksheets. Either way, you got what you need here. And right here, you can practice problems that we've been doing, calculating slope, finding missing coordinates, all of that while being timed. That way you can learn to work under pressure. So with that, do you understand where to go? Math knowledge, unit nine for that specific problem that we just did. 
And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there, and you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you wanna raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe and raise your score.